So in this video, 3.3 examples one, the problem states, identify the open intervals for which the function is increasing or decreasing. So we do have to follow our steps to do that. First step is to find f prime of x. Um, we do need to write this as an exponent. And then we do will need to do the product rule. So the first function times the derivative of the second function chain rule does need to be applied plus the second function times the derivative of the first so we end up with um, negative 2x squared over 2 square root of 4 minus x squared these two will reduce and here we just get the square root of 4 minus x squared so I will need to multiply by the common denominator to this fraction only so that I can make this all one giant fraction and the purpose of that is is because I do need one single numerator and one single denominator to find those critical numbers so I have negative x squared plus this um, double the house will make the house go away so 4 minus x squared over the square root of 4 minus x squared if I combine my like terms I get 4 minus 2x squared over the square root of 4 minus x squared now what is the domain of the original function the domain of the original function is 4 minus x squared has to be greater than or equal to 0 um, because of the square we have to solve this using test points so you set up a number line here you would get a positive 2 if you were to set that one equal to 0 you would get a negative 2 and so you pick a test point in here like negative 3 if I plug negative 3 in here I get a positive times if I plug a negative 3 in there I get a negative which is a negative. A negative number is not greater than or equal to zero. So this section would not be part of the domain. Then in the middle, if we plug in a number like zero, well this would be two minus zero, which is two, two plus zero, which is two, and two times two is four, which is positive, and that is greater than zero. So this section, this interval, is part of the domain. And then finally you check the last um, section, last interval so you plug in 3 here you'd get a negative 1 here you get a positive 5 a negative 1 times a positive 5 is negative 5 which is not greater than or equal to 0 so this part is not part of your domain so your domain is only from negative 2 to 2 which means when I go to find my critical numbers anything that's outside of the domain is not going to be considered in my intervals so let's go see first finding our critical numbers. So we have to set the numerator equal to zero. And we have to set the denominator equal to zero. So here I will um, minus the four on both sides, divide by negative two on both sides take the square root on both sides I get plus or minus the square root of 2 here I will take the square on both sides minus the 4 on both sides divide by negative 1 on both sides and then finally take the square root I get plus or minus 2 now plus or minus 2 is not inside of my interval um, they are the endpoints. So they're already included in the domain. So none of this is part of the graph at all. Okay? So I won't have any intervals of increasing or decreasing in these intervals. So I just have this square root of 2 and negative square root of 2. So negative square root of 2 is here, square root of 2 is here. And if I go ahead and I plug in my. Um, test points so in this interval I'm going to test negative 
Let's see, what is the square root of 2? That's negative 1.4. So if I test negative 1.5, I'll be within these two numbers. Here I'll test positive 1.5, and in the middle I'll test 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug each one of those numbers into f prime and see what um, sign I get. So f prime is here. So let me program that in my calculator first. Okay, and hit enter, but ignore um, two. Let's put our number first because apparently the last number I used is causing a domain error. So negative 1.5 stores x, and then now I will plug in the function. 4 minus 2x squared, oops, squared, divided by the square root of 4 minus x squared. Now it gives me a number, so I get a negative value. Now I'm going to do f prime of 0. So we're going to do 0 store x, plug it in, and I get a positive number here, positive 2, and then finally plug in 1.5 for x, and we get a negative number. So according to that theorem 4.5, that means that in this interval, from negative 2 to negative square root of 2, the function is decreasing. And then in this interval, from negative square root of 2 to square root of 2, the function is increasing because it's positive. The derivative value for these values, these x values, is positive. And then finally, for this one, that means for the interval square root of 2 to 2, the function is decreasing. Now, um, be careful because I noticed that even though our domain has brackets, it says identify the open intervals for which the function is increasing or decreasing. So if you come here in your final answer in WebAssign, you don't want to put those brackets. Even though those numbers are included in the domain, they only want open intervals for the increasing and decreasing subintervals.